I'm the against the free press. I'm against the free press, and I'm waiting. I'm the Augusta Free Press, and I'm designing. I'm never too busy for the Augusta Free Press. Reporting for the Augusta Free Press, I'm Chris Graham. It was Rodney Landers' time. This six-yard scamper gave JMU a 10-point fourth-quarter cushion, and the Dukes are covering one side kick late to hold on for a gritty 38-35 win over Wofford in the first round of the 1AA playoff Saturday in Harrisburg. It had looked like top right James Madison was going to coast to the quarterfinals after rolling to a 28-14 lead on the strength of three Landers TD passes, but the Terriers made a game of it, tying it at 28 with 1-11 to go in the third on a second of a pair of Dane Romero touchdown runs. Dave Standard capped a long JMU drive with a short field goal three minutes into the fourth to give the Dukes a 31-28 lead, and then Landers scored from six yards out with 3.21 to go to make it 38-28. Mike Rucker scored in a 12-yard run on third and goal with 1.02 to go to make it interesting. But JMU recovered the ensuing one side kick and ran out the clock. It was a big win for the JMU program, which had imposed a playoff triumph to this 2004 national championship. But JMU coach Mickey Matthews knows that his Dukes will have to play a lot better, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, where Madison gave up 431 yards of total offense to Wofford on Saturday to make another deep playoff front. Offensively, we played pretty well, except for the third quarter. You know, the, where we punted one time, and I thought the turnover was huge. I was, I, I, I told Jeff I didn't think we could miss a turn. You know, but we just could not, our, our linebacker, we just, you know, it's, you know, when you play option football, it really helps to have really good linebackers. And ours are, you know, two of them have shoulder shirts, I think, after the season. They're, they're the ones healthy they're playing. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're struggling with the linebacker, and I thought that Wolf did a good job exposing us. Landers wouldn't take another first-round playoff exit for an answer. His senior accounted for four touchdowns and 294 yards of total offense including 166 on the ground. And when the game was on the line in the fourth quarter, it was in his hands and by design. The game, um, I just like to take over if I can. Um, I, I can't explain it, but, you know, I, I didn't want this to be my last game at home. Um, I didn't want this to be my last game, period. And, uh, you know, it's kind of my approach. You know, at the end of games, I just... You know, I, I want to make plays. The TD run was vintage Landers. He was hit at the three and then again at the goal line, but he somehow willed his way into the end zone. You know, I was just fortunate enough to have some momentum. Um, you know, I saw the goal line. I think it was a, a third and eight. And, uh, you know, my mindset was just getting, getting the end zone because the drive before we had been stalled, you know, had to settle for a field goal. So you know, I, I want to do whatever it took to get the, get the touchdown. JMU next gets CAA rival Villanova, who the Dukes beat 23-19 in October in Philadelphia. Nova defeated Colgate 55-28 on Saturday. Matthews hasn't had a chance to take Villanova just yet. Uh, we're probably going to have tackling practice again. <laughs> That's what caused that up at Villanova is how bad we tackled. Uh, same kind of quarterback that we played. I thought the, Villa, the Wofford quarterback competed very hard. Just, you know, really had a big heart. And that's the way the, Villa, the Villanova quarterback is. You know, he's got a big heart, and he competes very hard, breaks a lot of tackles. So we're, you know, he was bigger than some of our defensive ends. He's really a big guy. He runs how big he is to you play him. But, uh, it's going to be a great game. You know, I, I, I know you guys, I just hadn't thought about it in a second. Obviously, I've been trying to get our guys to tackle for the last three hours. For more on the game, go to AugustaFreePress.com for a podcast featuring a wrap-up of the post-game interviews with Mickey Matthews, Rodney Landers, Wofford coach Mike Ayers, and more, plus my game recap. And check back next week for previews of the quarterfinal matchup of JMU and Villanova and full coverage of next Saturday's game. Reporting for the Augusta Free Press, I'm Chris Graham.